So guys, now we are ready to remove the rear tire on this Elite 80. Now here's the downside. To remove this tire, I am 100% sure that we have to remove the exhaust. Not just the exhaust, but in the header itself. So we're gonna have to crawl underneath and remove the header. Get through here and then, yeah, pretty easy. Okay, that's coming out easy, which is good. And yep, the other one. So very easy to remove. And just make sure that you grab a hold of the header. So that's one of the bolts that we just removed and then there's another one. At this point, you probably should think about removing the spark plugs as well. So this is the axle bolt. So we have to remove that. I tend to like want to remove this before I do anything. I locked my rear brake and I have my uh, this is really tough. Ah. So this is very stuck on there. And there we go. All right. That was really tight on here. This was really tight with the without the air compressor. So there's a washer and the nut. And I don't know if I'm able to. We should be able to kind of snap the tire to move. But let's see if, uh, here we go, it's coming out. But you can see that it, the exhaust is not letting us remove the tire. And that, unfortunately, that's always a, an issue on the scooter. So the, that's why we want to remove this exhaust. So there are bolts here and we're going to use a, I think it's a 12 millimeter and remove them so one is gone. So the exhaust is still on there. This is so tight. All right, there we go. There we go. This one popped right out. It's the same sort of style. It's got like a, uh, a spacer, a metal spacer. After you remove the seat and everything and the battery holder, the front just kind of pops out. There's no bolts holding it. The only thing that's holding it is this, I believe. So we should be able to reach using an extension and get those bolts. These are 10 millimeter bolts that hold the exhaust. Jesus, they made such a terrible design for the exhaust here by holding the exhaust there we go just by holding the exhaust and now removing the hugger side i was able to squeeze this out so tires off there we go and one side is out and i do think it does have a tube yeah i think it's got a tube so let's flip it and let's do this again. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the tube out. So that way we don't pinch it. This system what I basically do is I'll take this very long bar with the addition of this, just kind of put the tire lever over it. Now the key is to take this big bar, kind of fit it in here like that. And now you can kind of put a lot of leverage on that tire, just kind of squeeze it down. And Use your other tire lever to kind of push it off the rim and that's it. Tire is out, rim is out. Let's put it on the table. We're gonna do a conversion on this rim for my Honda Elite 80. It actually belongs to a friend of mine. And this is the tube that was inside. So I'm not exactly sure why it has a tube inside, but I think what happened is that these tires dry rotted so much that the previous owner had tubes installed. 
That might be idea, an idea if your tire is leaking, but it's much better to have a tubeless uh, system in a tubeless rim. So we are gonna go and ditch these tubes and put a valveless stem or a stem in here so we don't have to use tubes anymore. We have the hole up here and I ordered one of these uh, stems and it basically has like a little rubber bit. So this is the valve that I bought. You know, these things are not horribly expensive. I think I bought this for $5 and it comes with two. And previously I had one laying around and it was a 90 degree bend. This is a 30 degree bend which might not be uh, the ideal way for this rim. I wish I got a 90 degree, but I got a, a 30 degree bend. So that's what it looks like. And this, this is what we're gonna be installing. If you look at it, the rim is gonna be sitting right over there. So we need to push this all the way down. There's many ways of doing it. I just use a, a C-clamp and I kind of squeeze it down. All right, that is giving enough pressure in there. I'm just kind of rocking the wood back and forth and just make sure that the wood is not destroying the stem. Okay, so that's actually starting to go in. If you look over there, the, and you can tell where it needs to go. So there we go, it's actually in there. So I'm gonna back it off. So I'm gonna put more pressure on one side than the other. And I'm gonna look down, yeah, and it's almost there. So I'm just gonna make sure that, yeah. So I think that did it. The right clamp is what we needed. We needed more pressure and this little clamp did not give me initially the right amount. So this is where the valve stem is, it comes with two of them and the little cap. So it's like $5, very, very inexpensive. And a lot of times if your tire is leaking and you think it might be leaking, check the stem as well. Sometimes it leaks around the rubber. I've had to replace this on my Yamaha C3 scooter. That's why I had an extra one just laying around. Let's go ahead and put the tire on the rim. You wanna check for the direction of the tire. This is the exact same tire that's in the front, same size and everything. It's a Midas 350, 10 inch. The only thing to really pay attention is where the direction goes. There's an arrow where it should be facing. So this is the rear tire, so it's gonna be running this way. At this point, we have the tire and the rim. And one of the things I do is I put plenty of lubrication on the tire. And this is just water and soap. And I put it and on the inside. This really helps out. When I was like changing tires before, I did not do this. And this was the biggest mistake that I did when I first started changing tires. So as you do this, just make sure that you have the orientation right. Okay, it's going in. And I think motorcycle riders kind of realized that the shops were just taking advantage of them. And uh, <clears throat> now if a, a shop is smart, they will charge very little. I think some shops started changing tires for like $25. So that's a, a decent amount. But <clears throat> I remember going to shops and they wanted, one time like a guy, a shop wanted like $100 to change a tire. And you had to like buy the tire at the shop. So start, just kind of pushing it in. And multiple tire levers are gonna be needed here. They usually do this on the floor. So tire, tire machines don't have this problem because they're, they're high up, but, <clears throat> or use your arm, there we go push it down 
And I'm not putting a lot of pressure, but I am seeing the tire go into it quite a bit. So, so now it should go in. And that's it. You need a good uh, compressor. And then we're gonna check the pressure. On the side of the tire, it usually says the maximum pressure. I believe it's 40 PSI is the maximum. Let's see. Choo -choo -choo. 36 PSI cold, max load 430, 430 pounds. So you can't weigh more than 430 pounds on these tires, which is kind of funny. There we go, one pop, two pops. So that usually means that it goes into the bead at that time. Strangely enough, my Yamaha 10 Ray one time, when I put the tires on that, didn't pop, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes it's just off the bead and that goes into the... Okay, so we're gonna check the pressure. 30, it's actually at the right pressure. I'm just gonna put a little bit more. And we're gonna recheck the pressure. So it's at 33, so just a little bit more. Just a little bit more pressure. And it's at 35, so that's the perfect pressure. Now the only thing I'll do is I'll take some soap and I'll put it at the edge here and I'll look for bubbles because I wanna make sure that it's not leaking any air. So that seems to be good. And I'll do it at the stem as well. Just look for any bubbles that could possibly come up. You could just use water. And I have some water bottles here, so I can just kind of put it and just look for the bubbles. And yeah, it is not leaking. So that's a win on our part to say that this bike is not exactly the most friendly to work on because you have to remove the exhaust and that's usually something that happens with scooters you have to remove the exhaust to remove the wheel but the exhaust header is in the front so therefore you have to remove this entire bit of plastic just to reach the header so at this point I'm, I need to put the pipe back on the header so start it, always do it with your hand as much as you can. Let's just make sure that we tighten this. I don't wanna have to re, redo this. We're just putting the plastic cover on. This is the battery terminals. And this is on just using a tab system but it's kind of an annoying, annoying sort of thing. But, uh, just kind of give it a good. And there we go. Starts very nice. I'm gonna pull it out. These bikes were very popular back in the 80s. You can watch some of the TV commercials from the 80s on YouTube as well. They were pretty cheesy. But the 80s stuff are back. Oh, come on, Adam. I can't. It's easy. I've never ridden one. It's quick. Don't even drive. Honda scooters. They're everything but ordinary. It's sexy. I'll take it. Stuck here. The cops won't bother me. 